Hello everyone and we got some spicy, spicy news for you guys today. First of all, an XRP affiliated company, uh, really hyped up by David Schwartz and others, PolySign, which was supposed to be like working with Ripple in custody, has folded, it seems like. Now, there were signs of this folding way, way back in May when Ripple decided to buy their competitor, Mataco, instead of PolySign. And what that actually says is like, you know, maybe they had, Mataco had something that they didn't. And as you can see, David Schwartz said like, um, that the PolySign deal wasn't a good fit for Ripple, so they spent $250 million buying Mataco instead. And of course, they uh, uh, David Schwartz addressed growing inquiries posed by members of the XR community regarding Ripple's choice to forge a partnership with Mataco, a competitor of PolySign. So that was like one of the shots that was fired, a meaning that maybe PolySign wasn't as good as intended. And today, Crypto Erie actually has posted that PolySign is actually doing a public auction notice or foreclosure. Now, this has to do with like boat capital or something. So some people are saying maybe it's just boat capital selling off their shares, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. There is actually a notice for sale on Lakewood Advisors, which is the company handling the sale. And it was reported on News BTC. Um, not very popular news right now, but um, not all is going well in David Schwartzland because like PolySign was be supposed to be this big thing, but it never really took off. The sale uh, said public auction will commence at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That certain 100% equity in uh, interest in PolySign, Cayman uh, LTD, Cayman Islands Incorporation, and National, those are its subsidiaries. Um, basically, PolySign Capital LLC, a Wyoming limited liability company, and Atomic Net. Basically, a bunch of them is going to be sold off. And of course, there's going to be stuff on the purchase price. And uh, if you're saying that like that just might be FUD, we do actually have the actual salespeople um, listing it on their website. Public auction notice for foreclosure sale. PolySign, Cayman Islands, LTD, PS International Standard of Custody, and Trust Company, LLC, PolySign Capital. So what happened was it looks like PolySign defaulted on its loan agreement, which is weird because they did raise a lot of money. Uh, I think the last round ended sometime like last year, but maybe they just ran out of money and they had to default. Um, and I think it was, uh, I think it was Boathouse Capital 3 LP. That was the one that kind of lent them the money and they couldn't pay it back. So they have to liquidate. So all the details are actually right here. The collateral will be sold as a block, but the agent receives the right to consider proposals to do to only acquire certain business segments or assets among other requirements. The purchaser at sale will be required to represent that the collateral is being acquired for the purchaser's own account and not with a view to the sale or distribution thereof, and the collateral will not be resold unless pursuant to an effective registration statement under the Securities Act of 1933. All this stuff is here. Um, as for people that bought the pre-sale shares or the pre-IPO shares, I'm not sure what's going to happen to them. My guess is you're going to lose all your money. I've actually been on these pre-IPO sales before. Generally, what happens is if the company folds, you lose all your money. And some people are hoping that like, the worst that can happen is they get their investment back. That's generally not how these things work. There are special cases where that is how it works, but generally when the company liquidates, you basically lose your money. I think some people are in disbelief. Crypto Erie is actually in disbelief. Um, and some people are saying like, well, you know, the news article kept on, is, keeps on getting removed from their site. It hasn't. Twitter was just blocking the news article's link for some odd reason. And of course, it being on the uh, Lakewood Advisors LLC, I think that tops it off. And I do actually think it's dying at this point. So not really sure what happened here, but uh, David Schwartz's business thing has not gone very well. Hope you guys didn't lose too much money in it. But um, yeah, Ripple decided to go with the Mataco route. And I think that was PolySign's death now because they couldn't really get funding. They couldn't get someone to buy it out. I think because they were affiliated with Ripple and XRP, um, David Schwartz thought like, you know, the company might actually, Ripple might actually buy PolySign out. But they eventually ended up going with a competitor and that ended up being disastrous for PolySign. So yes, it is dead. So the stock markets have actually hit an all-time high. Um, the Dow Jones has hit an all-time high today, and that was on bullish news or bullish sentiment from Jerome Powell. 
the mighty Jerome Powell actually said that uh, it's very likely that um, he will lower interest rates three times next year. Now, it's only going to be about 25 basis points each. It's going to take him until 2026 to lower it all the way down. But, you know, people are very happy about this because he's basically signaled a stop to the interest rate hikes. Um, the inflation is coming down nicely. Gas is moderating out, basically. And he's going to start uh, lowering interest rates as maybe as soon as March of next year, but most likely June of next year. He doesn't want to uh, too quickly rate, uh, lower the interest rates, but he does want that soft landing. But with the stock market the way it's going, I don't really think we're going to hit a recession next year. I think the recession ended at the end of 2022, and we've been doing okay afterwards. So inflation's coming down. Gas prices are coming down, but that's always volatile, obviously. Um, people, even if they say it, the economy is bad, they ain't acting like it because even adjusted for inflation, people are spending as much as ever on stuff. So people aren't really acting like they're running out of money. Demand is still decently high. It's not super, super high, like right, like it was like right after the uh, pandemic, but you're not going to be able to match like right after the pandemic when everyone's been pent up. But it is like growth has been decent this year. It hasn't been like great this year, but it has been decent. We're not really in a recession anymore. I don't think we're going to be in one. Like all the analysts are kind of like revising their estimates to not be in a recession anymore because they were obviously wrong for 2023 being in a recession. And overall, that's very good for crypto. That means like the rates coming down, people can get money easier. People aren't running out of money, so they're still going to buy into risk assets. And I think like Jerome Powell's stance has shifted to the most dovish I've seen in a long time. And that does point to a lot of people that, hey, it's time to get back into some of those risk assets now. Because, you know, if I don't, I might miss the boat. If I miss the boat, I'm going to miss out on a lot of gains. So given on that, Bitcoin derivatives have pointed to a $50,000 price target probably by the end of this year. Look, the futures and the option mar markets are looking very, very bright. So obviously there's a $44,000, $45,000 resistance. We've gone up about a thousand points today, but the massive drop most, for the most part has actually been recovered today. And of course, um, the crash was accelerated by derivatives in the short term and the options in the futures will actually make up for it as well. There's a lot of interest in Bitcoin. Uh, and despite the fluctuations, retail traders actually remain neutral to bullish. So on the derivatives data, um, they're pointing at 50,000 probably by the end of this year. And I think there is a good chance we'll get close to 50,000 by the end of this year. We may not pass it because there will be a resistance at 50K, obviously. But essentially, like we're going to be around 50K probably by the end of the year. We're still about two weeks away. I don't foresee a big crash before the end of the year. And I don't really see foresee a big crash before the halving. I think there's going to be a lot of um, excitement with the ETFs. And yes, I do foresee a small pullback when the ETFs are accepted, probably in January um, of next year, less than a month away. But since those actually do bring real solid money into crypto, I don't see the crash to being that bad. So maybe we get to like 50,000 to go down to like 42 or so, 43. That might seem like a big crash to you guys, but um, but compared to how much we've actually gone up, less than a 20% crash, probably 15% crash, not very much. I expect us to gain that back within the span of probably like three or four weeks at least, and then keep going up from there as we get closer to the halving. People wishing for 10 or 12K are not going to get their wish. And if they don't get in on that uh, ETF pullback, they're probably not going to get in at all at any time because it's going above 50, well above 50 after that. There's also a uh, piece that says meme coins are a menace to crypto. They mentioned Doge, Shiba Inu, you know, like um, Bonk, especially. I don't know if they mentioned Snack or not, but I heavily disagree with that opinion there. I think meme coins get newer traders into the system and some of them end up staying. Not all of them, obviously. And these meme coins on, on off chains, as I have mentioned, are very good for people to actually get into using DEXs because, you know, if you just trade in Bitcoin and Ethereum, there's a very good chance that you're just going to go on a centralized exchange, not use a decentralized exchange at all, and never fully get into the ecosystem of crypto because you're just buying, holding, and waiting to sell. Whereas if you buy one of these, especially the off ERC20 meme coins, 
Many times the only place to get these coins is via a DEX. So you will actually have to uh, buy the coin, use the ecosystem and get a sense of what crypto is all about, get a sense of what decentralization is and how these DEXs work. It kind of more or less forces you to embed yourself more in the crypto ecosystem and that's what we need. Like if you're buying Doge, yeah, sure, you can just get it on Coinbase. But even if you're buying some of the smaller ERC-20 ones, you will actually need to use the Ethereum ecosystem. That might be bad because if the Ethereum ecosystem sucks, it's slow and it costs a lot of money. But, you know, some of the others... Um, I do actually think that some of the others, you will be able to get into an ecosystem that's not super slow, that's actually fairly efficient. And I'll give you kind of like an idea of what a decentralized economy can be. And if you're using the DEX, you're much more likely to look into the AMMs, the pools, the yield farming and stuff. The government may not like that because it does make it hard for them to track you on that stuff. But I think for uh, your own crypto knowledge, that's exactly what we want you to do because people really need to understand the aspect of crypto, what it's actually built for, what the decentralized economy is. And once they understand that, they'll get more and more comfortable with it and they'll get more and more people to actually play with these ecosystems, which will drive the value of the coin. Because I do believe the main value uh, to coins is going to be the DeFi ecosystem, is going to be the stuff they build on that system. And all that other stuff, you know, like the industrial adoption, I don't think is really going to affect the price at all. You know, like crypto is meant to build an economy by itself, not really just help the current economy. It'll be a parallel economy and it'll probably be affected by the stock market. And I expect it to grow nearly as big as the stock market in the future, obviously. But for right now, um, I think these meme coins are actually really good for people to discover the crypto economy. We just got need to get over a couple of regulatory issues, and I think we'll actually be really, really good for the future. So I don't agree with the article at all. I think meme coins are fine, and I think they actually play a pretty, cool, pretty critical role into like mass crypto adoption. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. Thank you, and have a nice day.